There have been a few times when I'm driving down a busy highway that has grassy fields on each side and spot a small bird hovering in the air, flapping its wings rapidly. I know immediately that it's a kestrel. These are moments when I very much wish I had my camera with me and a safe place to pull over. Kestrels are full of some amazing adaptations like hovering. But let's start with some basics and then I'll get into more of what sets them apart from other birds. There are 13 kestrel species found all over the world, such as the American kestrel, which is the smallest falcon in North America, though its range extends all the way to the tip of South America. There's also the larger common kestrel, also known as the European kestrel or Eurasian kestrel, found in Europe, Asia, and Africa. And there's the Australian kestrel, also known as the Nankeen kestrel, and is found in Australia and Papua New Guinea. So let's get back to hovering. Hovering is a behavior that is common among kestrels across the globe and is used when looking for food, which could be a mouse, dragonfly, praying mantis, songbird, moth, snake, lizard. They're not picky. Hovering from above improves their chances of spotting prey. It buys them time while they wait for the exact right moment before descending down and grasping it with their talons. To make hovering possible, you need Eula feathers and to leverage the laws of physics. A good headwind helps too, but it isn't required. Eula in Latin translates to winglet. It's basically the bird's first digit, think of it as the thumb, and is covered with three to five feathers and can be seen sticking out when they hover. All birds that can fly have these feathers, but it's more pronounced in some raptors. So how does this facilitate the kestrel's hovering? Here's the physics light explanation. The Eula feathers function much like the flaps on an airplane's wings, helping to produce lift and prevent stall when it lands. You may be wondering then, if all flying birds have Eula feathers, why can some birds hover and not others? Basically, it depends on what adaptation the bird has relative to how they get food. For example, one bird may have a specific wing shape and powerful musculature that supports the ability to generate lift and thrust versus having a behavior like diving or gliding, which would make hovering less efficient or even impossible. Let's talk about how kestrels manage hovering in different wind speeds. If there's a headwind, they can fly right into it, matching the speed of their flight with the speed of the air, allowing them to stay in place relative to the ground below and more or less just float in one place. The wind is not perfectly constant, so they use subtle movements to counteract the pull of gravity, the angle of their wings, maybe a flap here and there, and the angle and spread of the tail feathers to keep them in one place. They can still hover if there's no wind, but they have to rely more on their own flappy power to remain aloft. It requires more energy and cannot be sustained for as long. The flapping propels them forward, but by changing the angle of their wings or the path of the downstroke, they can remain in one place. It's like treading water, only they're treading air. Whether hovering with or without constant flapping, they keep their heads still and eyes locked on the ground. Studies have shown they move their heads less than two millimeters in any direction, while their bodies are making constant numerous adjustments in response to changes in the air. American kestrels have a feature that's quite interesting. They have two large black markings on the backs of their heads that look like eyes. These distinctive spots are known as ocelli, meaning little eyes, or false eyes. It's a form of mimicry meant to confuse and deter predators into thinking that the kestrel is looking right at them, even though it's not. American kestrels are quite small, about the size of a morning dove, except with a bigger head and longer wingspan, and even though they are fierce predators, they can still become prey for larger raptors. 
Kestrels are also known for bobbing their heads. They do this to judge depth and distance, to assess what's a threat and what isn't, and to get a better view of what's going on in their environment. It's similar to how we might tilt our heads or jut our head forward to get a better look at something we're focused on. Remember that like many birds, kestrels can't move their eyes in their sockets. And lastly, kestrels are known for flicking their tails. It's thought that they do this to maintain balance, to show a state of emotion such as aggression or excitement, as well as serve as a form of communication. Studies have shown that the rate of tail flicking increases in the presence of a predator and may serve as a signal that it has been seen and that it, the kestrel, is healthy and alert and won't be an easy catch. There is still so much more to uncover about kestrels, but these are just a few aspects that make them unique. What kind of kestrel do you have in your area? Have you ever seen them hovering before? Feel free to share what your experience was like in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.